what do we have here, huh? A little Vim is not good. I'm gonna hate this, aren't I? I'm, I'm literally gonna hate this. Yo, what text editor do you use? Uh, me? Yeah, I just use VS Code. It's okay, gets the job done. What about you? Oh, me? Yeah, I use a JetBrains editor. You know, it's a little heavy and clunky, but... I, I can already feel that I'm gonna hate this. I already am hating this. I'm hating this experience, okay? I'm hating the experience. But it gets a job done and there's a lot of features built into it. Yeah, I get it, I understand. Hey, what about you, dude? I'm sorry, did you say you use VS Code and JetBrains? Uh, yeah, I remember when I used to do that when I was first learning how to program, then I started using a real text editor like Vim. Only based, based, based. This is so based. That is just, I mean, it's not my fault that it's accurate. What, what, you, you want me to complain that the sky is blue next? Only real developers use Vim. No one uses anything that requires a mouse. I'm a keyboard only type of guy. Uh, you know we created the mouse for a reason, right? Yeah. So people with skill issues can feel like they're useful. Got him! Cope! Such a cope! My goodness, the guy, the man, the man has copiitis over here. Yeah, 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 it doesn't matter. Why would I want to use something like a mouse to point to exactly what I want to click on and type on when I can instead just use my keyboard and just go up and down by pressing a bunch of letters and random character combinations that I need to memorize and navigate? By the way, I was really following this guy. He should have done a little bit more research and at least got some like good Vimisms in there, right? Because no person using Vim would say press a bunch of keys and random combinations, right? Nobody's going to say that, right? Actually... Okay, actually, if it, no Vim person says random, they would have said an intuitive set of fast moving keys to be able to get to where I want to be when I want to be there. Okay, that is what a Vimmer would say. Okay, actually, guy, tough guy. And also, just to be fair, we probably, we, we probably wouldn't even be talking to you guys because we're still trying to get video and audio working on our laptops. Okay, it's not my fault. I still have screen tearing. Okay, fine. We're gonna do a little story. We're gonna do a short story, okay? We're gonna do a short story. It's over. Yeah, it's just a short. It's called a short. It's not called a long, buddy. Okay? This is this isn't shaft, okay? This is just the tip. That's what these things are used to be known as. They were gonna call them just the tip, but then they realized it doesn't sell as well, okay? Okay, this is not full shaft content. This is just tip content. Now, I'm gonna be real for a second on this story, okay? We're gonna do a little long story here. I absolutely love StarCraft when I was younger. And I wanted to get so good at it. I remember the first time, really, where it started was Warcraft 2. And I really wanted to get good. And I definitely was all about trying to get good on Battle.net. And trying to get really good on Battle.net. And trying to braise up my stuff. And I realized how bad I was. And I didn't understand why I was bad until somebody told me, Hey, are you using the mouse to select your, uh, to like click all these buttons? And I said, yeah, I am. And he said, no, you can't do that. You have to you have to use like all the shortcuts. In Warcraft 2 is really where it hit me when Battle.net first came around. Someone chatting with me on Battle.net because I couldn't figure out how to get like into the, you know, high enough into the ELO. That's what I realized, like how much I've been just hamstringing myself, not using, you know, not using the tool well. You know, I knew how to use the tool. I just didn't know how to use the tool well. And so that's Really where Vim started for me, if we're going to be real here. After that, of course, when I saw Vim for the first time, I thought Vim was for losers. Honestly, I was I was just like all these guys. I was I, I thought Vim was for losers. I don't know why that is. Why does everyone start off when they first see Vim and think it's just for losers? What is that? What? Why is that? They're scared of it? I, I mean, I was scared of it. I, th I thought it was awful. It's ugly and unpleasant. Exactly. I mean, the perf this is perfectly accurate. I genuinely thought Vim was was stupid. I thought it was for that certain generation. I thought it was just the worst. I, you know, it, so this is, uh, if you're wondering why I'm always so curious about every piece of technology and I'm able to really argue a case for and be excited about something like Gleam in which I'm not going to use is really the reason why I'm always so excited about technologies and stuff. It is simply because of Vim. And the reason why is that I thought Vim was stupid. I thought it was absolutely the worst thing ever. I thought there was no way that anyone should actually use it. And then I accidentally became like the biggest Vim proponent in the universe. By accident. Reluctantly. And what I realized is that I often make snap decisions about tech without actually any real understanding. And my biggest career mistake of all time was not being open-minded about tech and exploring them and exploring tech for the sake of exploring tech to see if there is something better or more useful. You know, like that, that's honestly probably my biggest career mistake. 
Uh, and I did that for quite some time. I did that for quite a few years. Now I, I, I just explore I just explore tech regularly. Like I try to set aside at least an hour a day to just go read about new tech and uh, and uh, and to see things because it is it it's something that I could be completely sleeping on or thinking is completely nonsense, and yet it could be actually super duper awesome. And so you know, just kind of like a little word, a word of the old of an older folk to the younger folk. Don't be too closed off to things, you know. At least try things. Try things and get good enough at them that you have a really a good understanding. Don't be on the don't be on the peak of stupidity and don't end in the valley of despair. Get somewhere into it. You are just 20 years older than me and don't call yourself so old. I mean, I'm old enough that I've been in a career. I mean, to become a master back in the day, it took about 30 years. Right? So I'm not a master yet. Um I still have a little over a decade to become a master at Minecraft. And so oh, you seem 30, I'm, I'm 38, or I'll be 38 here soon. And so I really want to be a master at like what I do. And so I'm very, very, very excited. 10K hour rule to be pro at anything. I know they say that, but that's like not the case with programming, right? I've probably put in 30,000 hours of programming, maybe even more than that. And so it's like to be really, really, really good at something, it takes a long, long time. Okay, grandpa. Um, it's ever evolving. Yeah. And so I'm excited about that. And I'm excited about the ability to keep on being better and seeing b bigger pictures. And I, I do, I, I do attribute most of that to my jump between not using Vim to using Vim. That was the jump for me when I stopped being so uh, closed off to things. It's really when I realized just how wrong I was. That was actually the that that was my my leaving of the red part of the Dunning Kruger curve, where my perception of myself and what I actually am was really red. That that just made the top come down. I still sucked, but I just realized that I quit thinking that I am um, like I'm I'm great at things. Uh, honestly, efficiency is key to skill ups at this point in my career. That and learning regularly, uh, like you're describing. Ooh, was Vim the biggest increase? V again, Vim wasn't the biggest increase. It was the mentality that just came with it. The fact that all of a sudden I had to be on my command line more. I got exposed more to different ways of thinking. Uh, you know, you start to imagine things much differently when you see different ways to do stuff. Just like that, you know, that C article that we looked at earlier. When I looked at that C article and I saw different ways in which people kind of, or in different ways in which the C ace was programming, I realized like it is so much different than how I would have approached that problem. It was actually a really cool experience. I actually really, whether we like it or not, and whether we thought that guy was awesome or not, honestly, how he wrote this little linked list, I've never seen before. Uh, just because I don't ever do C. And this inversion of how it was done made me really think it was super cool. Like now I'm like, oh, that's pretty cool. That's a pretty cool way to do something. Like I was able to take something out of this because I came in with an open mind as opposed to being like, oh, this guy just writes such complicated ass code. I can see the benefit now in this. I can see why you'd want to do this. I can see even why you'd want to do this. Not saying that I would do this, but I can now see why people do this. And so that's like, that's, I think that's the, that's the biggest benefit I've got. The name is the Primogen.